For 140 million years, the reptiles had ruled. Some predatory dinosaurs were intelligent, sophisticated killers. But their time was almost run. But among their bones, new candidates jostled for the vacant throne of top predator. Among those contenders, there were, for example, the marsupials. Animals like terrifying, fast-running beasts. They briefly threatened to evolve a new dynasty of ruling reptiles in the fashion of their ancestors. But they, too, were to go extinct. The reason... Giant wolf sheep with a mouthful of teeth that could rip but not teeth that could cut or slice meat. A dental omission that was to prove their undoing. But before their extinction as predators, one lineage of condylarths escaped the new generation of carnivores that held sway on land by entering the water. There they survived and prospered, evolving fantastically until the present day. Overcome their enormous size and impenetrable skins. Enter the saber tooths, the most extreme practitioners of the cat's approach to carnivory. They evolved great stabbing blades, specifically to prey on thick skinned giants like Litopterm. Cats like Smilodon had great muscled necks to power their siding saber teeth. But how these bizarre carnivores actually use their weapons is a mystery. If they had, the result would have been, quite literally, shattering. It seems that the saber tooths literally tore out the throats of their victims, which bled to death. In the canopy of these primeval forests lived the ancestor of today's wolves, coyotes and foxes. But it was to come down out of the trees. The dawn dog was the first true dog. Strong, supple legs for climbing became longer and more rigid. Came their relatives, the dogs. The first dogs were small and timid. In that distant time, it was cats who chased dogs. Unlike the dogs, when the first cats came down from the trees, they kept their skills as climbers. The cats waited in ambush for larger meals, climbing on their prey as they would climb in a tree to deliver a killing bite. The dogs, by contrast, had stiff legs and a marathon runner's physique. They simply weren't built to wrestle large prey. The dogs left the cats to their killing trade. A giant ground sloth, nearly two meters high and weighing over a ton. The extinct dire wolf was as large as a modern jaguar. But even a dog this formidable could not take prey like the giant ground sloth on its own. But as a pack, they could kill it. It was a relatively unspecialized creature, Ictitherium. But soon, hyenas evolved with pointed jowls and racy legs. In effect, they have begun to look like dogs. Chasma pothetes. Taking the nimble, fast-running design to its limit, it had become a racy, cheetah-like hunter. They flourished until true cheetahs evolved and put them out of business. Meanwhile, back in Africa, a mysterious group, the Percrocutoids, were monopolizing the bone-crushing trade. It meant that there were still no openings for hyenas. And when they were brought down by cats like Homotherium, a new generation of hyenas was waiting to pick up the crumbs from the rich man's table. Spotted hyenas were on the scene too, and probably competed with Pachycrocuta. 
Some became the largest and most powerful of today's killers. These fearsome hunters were the dominant dog-like carnivores of the Northern Hemisphere for 10 million years. The bear dogs, as their name suggests, had many things in common with modern bears and dogs. They were strong. They ran after their prey. Like the bears, their large size protected them. And they were probably the first carnivores to live as families in dens. But a compromise of design as well as name, they were to go extinct. Giant, carnivorous running bears evolved to capitalize on the open spaces being created. An awesome branch of the family, they invaded North America, diversified, and then ran on to overwhelm the carnivores in South America, blood pouring from their mouths. journey is thought to have landed a few intrepid raccoon-like animals on the shores of South America. Small animals that escape the ground. Deep in their... <laughs> the carnivores countered again. Killers with long, thin bodies. The first per... The first known underground killer was a specialist on one species of beaver. They lived in a complicated corkscrew burrow. But this weasel suffered the consequences of having all its eggs in one basket. Since the mammals first inherited the earth, prey has been pursued by predator across the drawing board of evolution. Throughout The mammals became the new rulers. Over millions of years, and the weasels pursued their... In a few cases, the war has been very one-sided. The glyptodon, a giant relative of the armadillo, lived around two million years ago. It evolved such good defences that it was virtually invulnerable. The greatest predator of the day, the giant running bear, was no match for it. Forests, they had nowhere to hide. The struggle for speed had begun. The prey evolved longer, slimmer legs, and so raced ahead. But the predators countered in a similar fashion and started to catch up. Evolution and counter evolution have led to faster and faster predators and prey. This has been a marathon of 30 million years, and to survive, the prey have had to keep ahead. In the last two million years, the carnivores have played a trump card. The cheetah, a supreme specialist, led to another evolutionary war between predator and prey. The rodents couldn't outrun their predators, but they could escape into burrows. Not to be thwarted, the ancestors of the weasels evolved shorter legs and slimmer bodies to follow their prey down below. The early weasels specialized to hunt down narrower and narrower tunnels. They are dependent on the animals they kill. The dire wolves specialized in hunting giant ground slopes more than one million years ago. When the ground slopes disappeared, the dire wolves were dragged down with them into the oblivion of extinction. In a frozen landscape forged by a future ice age, a new generation of thick-skinned prey might arise. There could be advantages in being a big specialist. The saber-tooth design might come back into fashion, this time sported by a bear. And what of a future 
in which we continue to dominate the planet. The generalists are likely to rule this future world, smart, adaptable animals that would share our cities and perhaps dominate certain areas of them. Trying to predict the future is a dangerous game. But whatever